is scheduled for Friday and Monday. Um, today we're going to talk about something that, that words get thrown around all the time about APR and APY, and I'm going to show you how you can compare those and why banks might use one than the other. And we're also going to talk about uh, if you're going to put an investment in, like most people put in their retirement account, the formula for that, and also for figuring loans, the formula of how they figure out how much a monthly payment is based on um, information, right? Not that you're probably going to use those formulas, but especially the same. So, APR is your annual percentage rate. APY stands for annual percentage yield. And it says, basically, it's used to compare different APRs. Because what if you had a company offering you an investment um, at 5.25% compounded quarterly, and then there's another one at 5.75% compounded annually. How do you compare those? How do you know which one's a better deal? How is the, which one's going to give you the better money? The APY is how you can bring those and say um, which one is a better deal. Right? So it's basically the percentage rate that if compounded annually would yield the same return as the given interest rate with the, the given compounding period. So Ursula invests $2,000 with the Crab Key Bank at 5.15% annual interest compounded quarterly. What would be the equivalent annual percentage yield? So I'm going to show you how to set this up. And once you learn how to set it up once, it's the same every time. So you won't have to do So if we know she invests $2,000 at 5.15% compounded um, quarterly, we could say think about our formula, A equals 2,000 times 1 plus uh, 0.0515 compounded quarterly to the, I don't know what he is, I'm just going to say to the quarter. What if I wanted to find the annual percentage yield? Basically, we're going to say, what would the rate be if it was just compounded once? So what if I took the same thing, 2,000 times 1 plus, I don't know what the rate's going to be. I'm just going to call it R, OK? Only compounded once. So R over 1 is just going to be R. And it's only compounded once, which means it would just be to the 1t power. I'm just going to put 2t power. So this is to try to figure out what this is. I want to know when those are equivalent. So I'm just going to set those equal to each other. I'm just going to set this equal to this. 2,000 times 1 plus 0.0515 over Oh, it really kind of is annoying that we have that 4T up there. What would be a good time that we could pick 4T that would make our problem super easy? 1 would be a good time to pick for T. So let's just look at what's happening for one year. So let's say when T equals 1, that would just become to the fourth power. And over here, that would just be 2,000 times 1 plus R to the 1 power. So let's look at the end of one year, what would those be equivalent? You could really set them equal to anything, like you could say t is 5 and put 5 on both of them, um, but it just is easier if you pick one. Now we just want to solve this for r. Um, every time, it's going to be the same amount to start with, so do you agree that I could just divide by 2,000? And that's just going to take out with this. So basically, if you want to change an APR to an APY, you just set that middle part of the formula equal to just 1 plus r. And that's really not a hard problem to solve for. Because this is just all on my calculator, right? There's no variable in that. 1 plus 0 0.0515 divided by 4 is fourth power. And if I want to solve this for r, if it's just to the first power, if I just subtract 1 from that, then that would solve for r.
So I'm gonna type that all in my calculator. Four all to the fourth power and then minus one. I got something here about two five. Anybody in calculator? Which means 5.25 percent is the APY when 5.15 percent is the APR. So think about why companies might give you one over the other. If it's a credit card company, which one are they going to give you? Think they're going to give you the higher interest rate or the lower interest rate number? On a credit card? What do you want to pay? Do you want to pay higher interest on the credit or lower interest? If it's a credit card, they're going to be like, hey, we have a 5.15% APR compounded quarterly. If it's someone wanting your money to invest, they're going to say, hey, our APY is 5.25% um, because they want you to think that you're getting more money out of it. And so um, different reasons for people to give you different things. And if you're comparing options, that's something that you can do. There's one on your homework, they ask you to compare it, do the same thing, and then they ask you to like to think about why would one be better than the other answer. All right, so I didn't really know the difference between APR and APY when I taught in this book, so I thought it was interesting. Um, here's the big thing, okay? Here's the two other big formulas that you gotta know. Future value of an annuity. If you are investing money, okay? So this is like, um, Investing money periodically. Yesterday, we said uh, if you have like $8,000, you put it in something and you didn't touch it for eight years, how much money would that have? This formula says if you're putting so much money in, like in this uh, problem here, uh, periodic payments of $300 for 12 years. Um, at an interest rate of 6%, then payments are made and interest are credited quarterly, which means every three months, you put in $300. Every three months, interest is also credited. So you see the difference between yesterday's problems and today's problem? This is probably more realistic of what people do. I put money in a retirement every paycheck. So every paycheck, I get money taken out and put in, but every quarter, my interest is collected. So. Um, all right, so here you go. It's a very, uh, your book kind of a little bit. Um, so you can look at the page and open it. Um, here's your value. The new value is R. Times one plus. They use I for the compounding period, but I is really R, I'm going to say R over K, but it's your interest rate divided by the number of compoundings, to the, your book says the N power, but N is R times K. So I'm going to keep it as like the same way of R times K. I'm going to keep it the way that we did it yesterday. If you look in your book, they use I, where I equals R over K. They use N, where N equals K times T. But I like to keep it like this. Um, minus 1 all over R over K. That's a good formula, right? This is where calculator issues arise of uh, people typing things in their calculator. This is the reason I give you formulas on the test because I don't have this formula memorized, um, but I know when to use it because it's an investing stuff. And so this says, find the future value accumulated in annuity after investing payments of $300. So R is your monthly payments or whatever you're doing, quarterly payments. T is time, K is the number of compoundings, R is the interest rate. So I write it like this so that it looks like the formula that we used yesterday. Um, so this one's just practicing the formula, right? Let's just see if we can do this. It's much harder if I said solve for the interest rate, it gets a lot more complicated, right? Or solve for time, it gets a lot more complicated. 
I'm gonna say three hundred and sixty times. I always do it like the parentheses and I do times three hundred. It's up to you. You could just put the three hundred on top, I guess. One plus divided by what is my K in this problem? Four over three. Twelve years, so it's um, four times twelve, which I'm just gonna put. I'm just gonna type as uh, sixty or forty-eight. <laughs> I put that in my calculator. Minus one, all divided by point zero six divided by four. If you are not so good with grouping symbols on your calculator, I cannot stress enough how much you should just like do the top and write that whole number down. Do the bottom and write that number down and divide them because if you type this in incorrectly you get a very different answer than the right answer and so like i said before part of this is knowing how to type this in your calculator it's part of why i put those parentheses there to kind of show you uh what to do if i was going to type this all in my calculator at once so maybe you want to do that you can say 300 times i would put a parenthesis here I would close that parenthesis there to show that that's the top, and I would also put a parenthesis on the bottom to show that I want that together on the bottom. So a lot of parentheses. You forget a parenthesis, you mess things up. Also, if you're going to write four times twelve, you need parentheses up there. So I'm going to write forty-eight. Okay. Or you can just do it in multiple steps. That's the other option. they do this for 12 years, you should get $20,869.57. If you did not get that, then you type something wrong in your calculator. And that's where I would say, do it a step at a time, right? Do the top, write it down, write down the decimals. Do the bottom, write down the decimals. Divide them out, take it times 300. So try it again. You didn't get it the first time.
it, but what happened on Tyler's is he typed this in, but the minus one wasn't up there, right? Order of operations, like you have to do that whole top first, or you have to put it in parentheses so that it's doing this and subtracting one. So it's a really small number that you're multiplying by 300. Um, so check it again. the way you type stuff in super super important you got to make sure that you tell your calculator what order that it needs to do problems in so you either can break it up step by step or we can practice doing this and make sure that you get it but just know that that's an issue when it comes time to the test of typing things in correctly to get that problem so part of your homework today is just practicing that
dollars instead of investing. And so this is where you have to know which formula to use. If you are investing payments, trying to make money, that's the, the future value. If you are making payments, so this is like a loan payment. So you have a loan amount and you're making payments each month for so many years to try to pay off that loan. Then your formula is very similar. But it's one minus parentheses one plus r over k to the negative kt power all divided by r over. I forgot time solving. R is the loan amount. You kind of need that in there. the negative KT power. So one big deal on the test is knowing which formula to use, whether you're investing money periodically or you're paying payment um, every month or whatever. So notice on this one it says find the present value of a loan with an annual interest rate of 6.5% and periodic payments of $1,856.82 for a term of 30 years with payments made and interest charged monthly. Most people get a mortgage for 30 years. My mortgage is not nearly that much, but they must have a really nice house um, for a mortgage payment of almost $2,000 a month. Um, but what we can do is if we plug that in, we'll talk, we'll say how much will they pay after 30 years, how much money will they pay for that house? So this is also just trying to see our factors here. So, R is how much I'm paying a month, a monthly payment, 1866.82 times 1 minus parentheses 1 plus 6.5%, that's a pretty, uh, I don't know, it's a pretty good thing to get into the right. 6.5 divided by monthly payments, so that's 12 to the negative 12 times 30. And again, if you're going to type that in your calculator as negative 12 times 30, you're going to need parentheses around that also. All divided by, again, if you're going to type it in like this, I'm going to say parentheses 0.065 divided by 12. We're looking for how much they're going to pay after 30 years. It's, it's going to be a really big number, okay? If they're paying almost $2,000 a month for, for 30 years, they're going to be paying a lot for the house. So, again, decide how you want to do it. Do you want to do it a step at a time? Write things down. Do you want to do it all at once? And watch your parentheses. That's um, your choice. Remember at the top, you got to close the top if you're typing it all at once. So like, if I was doing this, I would have parentheses, parentheses, close it, parentheses up there, and then close the top parentheses. Or I'm just type it in right now. for people that tend to get the wrong answer when they type it all at once. Do the top, right? You people usually know to put this in parentheses, put their X one in parentheses, write that down. Or just hit enter on your calculator, right? Like do the top, hit enter, you get decimal, divide by the bottom, parentheses, hit enter, 
and multiply by the number in front, hit enter. And then that saves you. Every time you hit enter, it's saving you a set of parentheses that you need. Negative 12 times 30, because it's monthly for 30 years. Okay, I really want to get to another question before we have to leave, because it's right in these days. We really only have five more minutes. So, if you didn't get that, just pause, and we'll figure it out. But I want to talk about what happens if they ask you to find for something else. Because all we've done so far is plug into these formulas, typing it all in our calculator. What if they ask you to find a missing value, right? That's a lot harder. That's the algebra that you have to do. Let's look at one more. Hold on to that. Obtained a $25 year, $100,000 house loan with an interest rate she does not have to credit. She is a 9.5% interest rate. What is her monthly payment? Which means they're telling us the total amount. They're telling us this number. And they're asking you to solve for R. So when you're looking for the monthly payment, you're solving for R, and then you got to plug all that stuff in and divide it over. She's making payment, so we're using the, the last formula that I gave you, which is 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.0925 monthly payments is 12 to the negative 12 times 25 all over 0 0.0925. When I do these problems, I do this side and I write out all the decimals that I get and then I divide it over. Um, but again, do it in a step if you need to, right? Like do the top part, hit enter, divide by the bottom, hit enter, and see if that helps better. Like see if you can get the answer I'm going to type mine in too. The good thing is I have mine written out. So. And if you're raising that to the power, multiplying it together, put parentheses, carrot parentheses, negative 12 times 25. And then just an inner. And then divide by 0 0.0925, divide by 12. And if you do just this side, you should get 116.7703412. So I'm guessing maybe you forgot your negative sign up there. Something, something happened with the negative if you got that exact thing. Should not be negative, we're talking about payments. And then all you have to do is just take 1,000 divided by that number. And that's going to give you not 1,000, 100,000 divided by that number. And think about, we're talking about a monthly payment here for a house. So this is where you need to see if it's a reasonable answer for a $100,000 loan with a pretty high interest rate. You get a monthly payment of $856.38. And when you go to a place and you get a car, um, you buy a car with a loan, they use this formula, right? Like they have a program that does it for them, but they use this formula with interest rates to figure out monthly payments. Um, so this is like some of life math. Kind of um, but the hard part is the calculator part, and that's what we just have to practice that before we have our test on Monday to get the calculator portion of that test. Okay? So please see me if you continue to have calculator issues and we can we can figure out what's happening. Or my go-to method is break it up step by step because it really will work if you do that. Um, three, six, day two. Some of these are just typing in your calculator, but definitely some of them are solving for missing parts. Tomorrow we'll go over questions from this. I'll have a little worksheet for you to practice some more of this. I'll try to go ahead and have the review ready for you too if you want to review it because the worksheet's pretty short. Notice these do take a while to type in, uh, but it's just a one second worksheet. Uh, so I'll have some review thoughts for you as well if you want to go ahead and work on this file.
all of this is on Monday for the test because it's actually calculated for the Bye guys.